Okay, so here's your workflow. Pay close attention. Now, one thing that you're going to get is lost sometimes. So up in the corner, see there's Inkscape. And then up in the corner here, under GIMP, there is GIMP. So just know that if you are lost, you can look up there to see what program I'm in because you're going to be jumping back before, back and forth between uh, GIMP and Inkscape sometimes. So in GIMP, we're going to make a new document. It's going to be 256 pixels, pixels, change that to pixels, by 256 pixels, by 72. So hit OK. This document's small. Um, how small is it? Well, if I can go to image, the scale image, and drop this to inches, you can get a real world measurement of three and a half inches. That's small. At 72 resolution, small. So I want you to take the ink, and I just want you to make a few lines here. Doesn't matter what you make. Try to make something kind of cool with the lines and. Yeah, something. Now, I want you to take the blur tool and I want you to blur some of this. Maybe on the back side of these. On a few of them. It doesn't have to be all of them. All right, cool. Now, I want you to save this. So, to save it for another program, you have to export it as. Export as. And we're going to export this to at a name called Convert to Vector. And hit export. And export. So, this is exporting as a PNG file. Now in Inkscape, let's say I was uh, working in a world of laser cutting, for example. We would make a new document, and here we would have a whole bunch of stuff, but um, you know none of this stuff really matters because we can go default, and then. In here, under the document properties, I can change this to anything. So I'll use inches, and I'll state that anything is really 12 by 8. 12 inches by 8 inches. And I'll say that is the print bed. That's why I'm making it that size. I can close this out. Now it's 12 by 8. And I can go in import the convert to vector and I can embed it don't ever link it always embed it so this is what the size would be on the object here's the 12 inches and here's the 3 inches you can see what size that looks like it gives you something to wrap your head around but you zoom in on this thing and it's ugly it's pixelated and you couldn't actually laser cut this anyway because uh, laser cutting revolves around vectors. So how would I actually cut this thing out of paper, maybe? Well, this is what you have to do. Now you can convert it. You can go to Path and go Trace Bitmap. And maybe I don't want to deal with the background. Sometimes, a lot of times, I remove the background out. I have to take stack scans off, or I will not see the trace. And have the undo button, you know, ready, because you're going to be using it a lot. When you hit update, you're not going to see anything. And when you hit OK, you'll trace it. All right. Traced it. It's now vectors. I don't like this one, so I'm going to undo it.
And I'm going to go down to Edge Detection and hit OK. So see what happened. It bloated it out. This threshold right here is very important. So the threshold states that at a certain level of gray, I'm going to convert that over to vector. And you can see, you don't really see what the vector is until you move the raster. Look at that. So that's why I'm saying you have to have the undo button ready because anytime you go to do this, um, it, that's going to be the case. So when you hit brightness cutoff and you hit update and then OK, this is the object I have to look at. And wow, look at that. It did a nice job. It took all the stuff that was blurry and made it into straight lines. And if we really closely look at this, let's go to um, View, Display Mode, and go to Outline. You can see that this is actually made of nothing, and this is now made of vectors. It converted it over for us. Now it gets a lot more powerful than that. This is just the very, very, very beginning of it. But um, just know that it doesn't matter about the resolution. The resolution be, can be the, the worst resolution in the world. It will translate it over. Now how smooth you want that to occur, let's say this gray, you weren't happy with how it smoothed it out. Well, again, you can go like this, highlight the original, and now I can maybe up the threshold a little. So at the threshold level, like at a 1, it's definitely going to take every gray and turn it into black. So much so that the whole document turns black. A reverse of there. So you, you got to be careful. That's that's too much. And how do you know if it's too much? Well, you got to play with it. Now, let's see if I can show you. Alt wheel mouse allows you to zoom or scroll. That's important because sometimes this window gets in the way. Alt wheel mouse. Perfect. So play around with that because if you get a sense of feel for it after a while. This one, it didn't take hardly any of the gray. It left all the blur out and kept the lines real crisp. This is probably something I, I would want anyway. Now just one more recap of this. What it really means is no matter what your level of drawing is, it smooths it out. It helps to have smooth lines to begin with, but if I'm a person that's trying to draw those anime lines or whatever that that current weird trend is to draw anime for everything, I can do that and then I can vector them out and it becomes so, so, so much smoother. All right. So lines like this, and when you zoom in on them, they seem so wholly pixelated, and that's only because they are pixelated. Well, you can convert those and look at export to convert, so I can update that one. And I can import it into here. So let's look at that line. Line's pretty jacked up. Okay. Didn't translate well. Up the threshold to like maybe 0.5. translated better. 
into a smooth line. Okay. So draw something really small and go back and try it out before you come back to the next video. All right. And after that, go to the next video.